Hindustani classical music is the traditional music of northern regions of the Indian subcontinent. It may also be called North Indian classical music or Sastriya Sangat. Its origins date from the 12th century CE, when it diverged from Carnatic music, the classical tradition of southern regions of the Indian subcontinent. Hindustani classical music has strongly influenced Indonesian classical music and Dangdut popular music, especially in instrumentation, melody, and beat. Besides vocal music, which is considered to be of primary importance, its main instruments are the sitar and sarod. Classical music can be divided into melody and rhythm, there is no concept of harmony. History Around the 12th century, Hindustani classical music diverged from what eventually came to be identified as Carnatic classical music. Hindustani music places more emphasis on improvisation and exploring all aspects of a raga, while Carnatic music is primarily composition-based. The central notion in both these systems is that of a melodic mode or raga, sung to a rhythmic cycle or tala. These principles were refined in the musical treatises Natya Shastra, by Bharata 2nd, 3rd century CE, and Datilam probably 3rd, 4th century CE. .In medieval times, the melodic systems were fused with ideas from Persian music, particularly through the influence of Sufi composers like Amir Khusro, and later in the Mughal courts. Noted composers such as Tansen flourished, along with religious groups like the Vishnavites. After the 16th century, the singing styles diversified into different gharanas patronized in different princely courts. Around 1900, Vishnu Narayan Bhat Khand consolidated the musical structures of Hindustani classical music, called ragas, into a number of thats. This is a very flawed system but is somewhat useful as a heuristic. Distinguished Hindu musicians may be addressed as Pandit and Muslims as Ustad. An aspect of Hindustani music going back to Sufi times is the tradition of religious neutrality. Muslim Ustads may sing compositions in praise of Hindu deities and vice versa. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Characteristics. Indian classical music has seven basic notes with five interspersed half notes, resulting in a twelve-note scale. Unlike the twelve-note scale in Western music, the bass frequency of the scale is not fixed, and intertonal gaps temperament may also vary, however, with the gradual replacement of the sarangi by the harmonium, an equal tempered scale is increasingly used. The performance is set to a melodic pattern called a raga characterized in part by specific ascent and descent sequences, which may not be identical. Other characteristics include king vadi and queen samavadi notes and characteristic phrases In addition each raga has its natural register and portamento rules. Performances are usually marked by considerable improvisation within these norms. Ragas are particular ascending and descending of notes. The ragas must have at least five notes. Ragas are of three types, urap, five notes, sharab, six notes, sampurna, seven notes. Most of the past and present musicians of Hindustani classical music follow the Natya Sastra of Bharath Muni and the systems introduced by Bhat Khand. The musicians have to be very careful to avoid other ragas while playing or singing a raga. Ragas may originate from any source, including religious hymns, bhajans, folklore, folk tunes and music from outside the Indian subcontinent. As the words help to compose a poem or story, colors for a nice painting, the musical notes help to compose a raga. 
The continuous playing or singing of a raga creates a mood which has an effect on the listeners and they like it. The mood of a raga could be of various types, such as burr, sringa, romance, love, and anger. Ragas are also claimed to have specific timings of the day and night for their performance. There are morning ragas, ragas of the noon, afternoon, ragas of the evening and ragas of the night. In between there are ragas which are called twilight ragas, or sandhiprakash ragas, or sung at the end of the day and beginning of the evening, dusk, or the end of the night and beginning of the morning, dawn. Also, ragas suitable for particular seasons such as the spring, summer, monsoon, and winter. History Topic: Sanskritic tradition Music is dealt with extensively in the Valmiki Ramayana. Narada is an accomplished musician, as is Ravana, Saraswati with her Veena is the goddess of music. Gandharvas are presented as spirits who are musical masters, and the Gandharva style looks to music primarily for pleasure, accompanied by the Soma Rasa. In the Vishnudharmatera Purana, the Naga king Ashvatara asks to know the Svaras from Saraswati. The most important text on music in the ancient canon is Bharata's Natya Shastra, composed around the 3rd century CE. The Natya Shastra deals with the different modes of music, dance, and drama, and also the emotional responses rasa they are expected to evoke. The scale is described in terms of 22 microtones, which can be combined in clusters of four, three, or two to form an octave. While the term raga is articulated in the Natya Shastra, where its meaning is more literal, meaning color or mood, it finds a clearer expression in what is called Jati in the Datilam, a text composed shortly after or around the same time as Natya Shastra. The Datilam is focused on Gandhava music and discusses scales swara, defining a tonal framework called grammar in terms of 22 micro-tonal intervals sruti, comprising one octave. It also discusses various arrangements of the notes merchana, the permutations and combinations of note sequences tanas, and alankara or elaboration. Datilam categorizes melodic structure into 18 groups called jati, which are the fundamental melodic structures similar to the raga. The names of the jatis reflect regional origins, for example Andri and Odia. Music also finds mention in a number of texts from the Gupta period. Kalidasa mentions several kinds of veena, paravadini, vipanchi, as well as percussion instruments, maradang, the flute, bamshi, and conch, shankar. Music also finds mention in Buddhist and Jain texts from the earliest periods of the Christian era. Narada's Sangita Makarunda treatise, from about 1100 CE, is the earliest text where rules similar to those of current Hindustani classical music can be found. Narada actually names and classifies the system in its earlier form before the Persian influences introduce changes in the system. Jayadeva's Gita Govinda from the 12th century was perhaps the earliest musical composition sung in the classical tradition called Ashtapadi music. In the 13th century, Shangadeva composed the Sangita Ratnakara, which has names such as the Turushka Todi, Turkish Todi revealing an influx of ideas from Islamic culture. This text is the last to be mentioned by both the Carnatic and the Hindustani traditions and is often thought to date the divergence between the two. <inaudible> <inaudible> medieval period The advent of Islamic rule under the Delhi Sultanate and later the Mughal Empire over northern India caused considerable cultural interchange. Increasingly, musicians received patronage in the courts of the new rulers, who in their turn, started taking increasing interest in local music forms. 
While the initial generations may have been rooted in cultural traditions outside India, they gradually adopted many aspects from their kingdoms which retained the traditional Hindu culture. This helped spur the fusion of Hindu and Muslim ideas to bring forth new forms of musical synthesis like Qawwali and Kyle. The most influential musician of the Delhi Sultanate period was Amir Khusrau (1253–1325), a composer in Persian, Turkish, Arabic, as well as Braj Basha. He is credited with systematizing some aspects of Hindustani music, and also introducing several ragas such as Yaman Kalyan, Zilaf, and Sarpada. He created the Qawwali genre, which fuses Persian melody and beat on a drupad-like structure. A number of instruments such as the sitar, were also introduced in his time. Amir Khusrau is sometimes credited with the origins of the Kyle form, but the record of his compositions do not appear to support this. The compositions by the court musician Sadarang in the court of Muhammad Shah bear a closer affinity to the modern Kyle. They suggest that while Kyle already existed in some form, Sadarang may have been the father of modern Kyle. Much of the musical forms innovated by these pioneers merged with the Hindu tradition, composed in the popular language of the people as opposed to Sanskrit in the work of composers like Kabir or Nanak. This can be seen as part of a larger Bhakti tradition, strongly related to the Vishnavite movement which remained influential across several centuries. Notable figures include Jayadeva 11th century, Vidyapati Florida, 1375 CE, Chandidas 14th-15th century, and Mirabai 1555-1603 CE. As the Mughal Empire came into closer contact with Hindus, especially under Jalal ud Din Akbar, music and dance also flourished. In particular, the musician Tansen introduced a number of innovations, including ragas and particular compositions. Legend has it that upon his rendition of a nighttime raga in the morning, the entire city fell under a hush and clouds gathered in the sky, and that he could light fires by singing the raga. Deepak, which is supposed to be composed of notes in high octaves. At the royal house of Gwalia, Raja Mansingh Tomar (1486–1516 also participated in the shift from Sanskrit to the local idiom Hindi as the language for classical songs. He himself penned several volumes of compositions on religious and secular themes, and was also responsible for the major compilation, the Mankutuhal, Book of Curiosity, which outlined the major forms of music prevalent at the time. In particular, the musical form known as Drupad saw considerable development in his court and remained a strong point of the Gwalia Gharana for many centuries. After the dissolution of the Mughal Empire, the patronage of music continued in smaller princely kingdoms like Avad, Patiala, and Banaras, giving rise to the diversity of styles that is today known as Gharanas. Many musician families obtained large grants of land which made them self-sufficient, at least for a few generations e.g. the Sham Chaurasia Gharana. Meanwhile, the Bhakti and Sufi traditions continued to develop and interact with the different gharanas and groups. <inaudible> <inaudible> Modern era Until the late 19th century, Hindustani classical music was imparted on a one-on-one -on -one basis through the Guru Shishya mentor tradition. This system had many benefits, but also several drawbacks. In many cases, the Shishya had to spend most of his time serving his guru with a hope that the guru might teach him a cheese piece or nuance or two. In addition, the system forced the music to be limited to a small subsection of the Indian community. To a larger extent, it was limited to the palaces and dance halls. It was shunned by the intellectuals, avoided by the educated middle class, and in general looked down upon as a frivolous practice. Then a fortunate turn of events started the renaissance of Hindustani classical music. 
First, as the power of the Maharajas and Nawabs declined in early 20th century, so did their patronage. With the expulsion of Wajid Ali Shah to Calcutta after 1857, the Lucknavi musical tradition came to influence the music of Renaissance in Bengal, giving rise to the tradition of Ragpradhan Gan around the turn of the century. Raja Chakradar Singh of Raigar was the last of the modern era Maharajas to patronize Hindustani classical musicians, singers, and dancers. Also, at the turn of the century, Vishnu Digambar Paluska and Vishnu Narayan Bhat Khan spread Hindustani classical music to the masses in general, and the Marathi middle class in particular. These two gentlemen brought classical music to the masses by organizing music conferences, starting schools, teaching music in classrooms, and devising a standardized grading and testing system, and by standardizing the notation system, Vishnu Digambar Paluska emerged as a talented musician and organizer despite having been blinded at age 12. His books on music, as well as the Gandhava Mahavidyalaya music school that he opened in Lahore in 1901, helped foster a movement away from the closed Gharana system. Paluska's contemporary and occasional rival Vishnu Narayan Bhat Khand recognized the many rifts that had appeared in the structure of Indian classical music. He undertook extensive research visits to a large number of Gharanas, Hindustani as well as Carnatic, collecting and comparing compositions. Between 1909 and 1932, he produced the monumental four-volume work Hindustani Sangeetha Padhathi, which suggested a transcription for Indian music, and described the many traditions in this notation. Finally, it consolidated the many musical forms of Hindustani classical music into a number of thats modes, subsequent to the Melakata system that reorganized Carnatic tradition in the 17th century. The ragas as they exist today were consolidated in this landmark work, although there are some inconsistencies and ambiguities in Bhat Khan's system. In modern times, the government run All India Radio, Bangladesh Beta, and Radio Pakistan helped to bring the artists to public attention, countering the loss of the patronage system. The first star was Gora Jan, whose career was born out of Fred Gaisberg's first recordings of Indian music in 1902. With the advance of films and other public media, musicians started to make their living through public performances. As India was exposed to Western music, some Western melodies started merging with classical forms, especially in popular music. A number of gurukuls, such as that of Alaruddin Khan at Maihar, flourished. In more modern times, corporate support has also been forthcoming, as at the ITC Sangeet Research Academy. Meanwhile, Hindustani classical music has become popular across the world through the influence of artists such as Ravi Shankar and Ali Akbar Khan. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Principles of Hindustani music. The rhythmic organization is based on rhythmic patterns called tala. The melodic foundations are called ragas. One possible classification of ragas is into melodic modes or parent scales, known as thats, under which most ragas can be classified based on the notes they use. Thats may consist of up to seven scale degrees, or swara. Hindustani musicians name these pitches using a system called sargam, the equivalent of the Western movable do solfage. Sa sadja sadja equals do. Re rishab sabha equals re. Ga ganda gandara equals mi. Ma madhyam madhyama equals fa. Pa pancham pankama equals so. Dha divat duravata equals la ni nishad nisada equals t sa sadja sadja equals doboth systems repeat at the octave. The difference between sargam and solfage is that re, ga, ma, dha, and ni can refer to either natural shudder or altered 
flat komal or sharp tivra versions of their respective scale degrees. As with movable do solfage, the notes are heard relative to an arbitrary tonic that varies from performance to performance, rather than to fixed frequencies, as on a xylophone. The fine intonational differences between different instances of the same swara are called srutis. The three primary registers of Indian classical music are mandra lower, madhyar middle, and tar upper. Since the octave location is not fixed, it is also possible to use provenances in mid-register such as mandra madhyar or madhyar tar for certain ragas. A typical rendition of Hindustani raga involves two stages a lap, a rhythmically free improvisation on the rules for the raga in order to give life to the raga and flesh out its characteristics. The alap is followed by a long slow tempo improvisation in vocal music, or by the jod and jala in instrumental music. Tans are of several types like shudder, koot, mishra, vakra, sapat, saral, chut, halak, jada, murki, bandish or gat, a fixed, melodic composition set in a specific raga, performed with rhythmic accompaniment by a tabla or pakavaj. There are different ways of systematizing the parts of a composition. For example, stai, the initial, rondo phrase or line of a fixed, melodic composition. Antara, the first body phrase or line of a fixed, melodic composition. Sanchari, the third body phrase or line of a fixed, melodic composition, seen more typically in Drupad bandishes. Arbog, the fourth and concluding body phrase or line of a fixed, melodic composition, seen more typically in Drupad bandishes. There are three variations of bandish, regarding tempo. Vilambut bandish, a slow and steady melodic composition, usually in largo to adagio speeds. Madhyalaya bandish, a medium tempo melodic competition, usually set in andante to allegretto speeds. Drut bandish, a fast tempo melodic composition, usually set to allegretto speed or faster. Hindustani classical music is primarily vocal centric, insofar as the musical forms were designed primarily for vocal performance, and many instruments were designed and evaluated as to how well they emulate the human voice. Topic. Types of compositions The major vocal forms or styles associated with Hindustani classical music are Drupad, Kyle, and Tirana. Other forms include Damar, Trivet, Chaiti, Kahari, Tapa, Tap Kyle, Ashtapadis, Thumri, Dadra, Ghazal, and Bajan. These are folk or semi classical or light classical styles, as they do not adhere to the rigorous rules of classical music. <laughs> Drupad Drupad is an old style of singing, traditionally performed by male singers. It is performed with a tambura and a pakawaj as instrumental accompaniments. The lyrics, some of which were written in Sanskrit centuries ago, are presently often sung in Brajvasa, a medieval form of North and East Indian languages that was spoken in Eastern India. The Rudra Veena, an ancient string instrument, is used in instrumental music in Drupad. Drupad music is primarily devotional in theme and content. It contains recitals in praise of particular deities. Drupad compositions begin with a relatively long and acyclic alap, where the syllables of the following mantra is recited. Om Anantam Taran Tarini Twam Hari Om Narayan, Anant Hari Om Narayan. The alap gradually unfolds into more rhythmic jod and jala sections. These sections are followed by a rendition of bandish, with the pakawaj as an accompaniment. The great Indian musician Tansan sang in the Drupad style. A lighter form of Drupad, called Damar, is sung primarily during the festival of Holi. 
Drupad was the main form of northern Indian classical music until two centuries ago, when it gave way to the somewhat less austere Kyle, a more free-form style of singing. Since losing its main patrons among the royalty in Indian princely states, Drupad risked becoming extinct in the first half of the 20th century. However, the efforts by a few proponents, especially from the Dagar family, have led to its revival and eventual popularization in India and in the West. Some of the best-known vocalists who sing in the Drupad style are the members of the Dagar lineage, including the senior Dagar brothers, Nazir Moinuddin and Nazir Aminuddin Dagar, the junior Dagar brothers, Nazir Zahiruddin and Nazir Fayazuddin Dagar, and Washifuddin, Fariduddin, and Saeeduddin Dagar. Other leading exponents include the Gundicha brothers and Uday Barwalka, who have received training from some of the Daggers. Leading vocalists outside the Dagar lineage include the Malik family of Darbhanga tradition of musicians. Some of the leading exponents of this tradition were Ram Chatur Malik, Sayuram Tiwari, and Vidyur Malik. At present, Prem Kumar Malik, Prashant, and Nishant Malik are the Drupad vocalists of this tradition. A section of Drupad singers of Delhi Gharana from Mughal Emperor Shah Jahan's court migrated to Betia under the patronage of the Betia Raj, giving rise to the Betia Gharana. Bishnupa Gharana, based in West Bengal, is a key school that has been propagating this style of singing since Mughal times. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle is the more modern Hindustani form of vocal music. Kyle, literally meaning thought or imagination in Hindustani and derived from the Arabic term, is unusual as it is based on improvising and expressing emotion. A Kyle is a two to eight line lyric set to a melody. Kyle contains a greater variety of embellishments and ornamentations compared to Drupad. Kyle's romanticism has led to it becoming the most popular genre of classical music. The importance of the Kyle's content is for the singer to depict, through music in the set raga, the emotional significance of the Kyle. The singer improvises and finds inspiration within the raga to depict the Kyle. The origin of Kyle is controversial, although it is accepted that this style was based on Drupad and influenced by outside musical influences. Many argue that Amir Kushrau created the style in the late 14th century. This form was popularized by Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah through his court musicians. Some well known composers of this period were Sadarang, Adarang, and Manrang. Topic. Tarana Another vocal form, taranas are medium to fast-paced songs that are used to convey a mood of elation and are usually performed towards the end of a concert. They consist of a few lines of poetry with soft syllables or bowls set to a tune. The singer uses these few lines as a basis for fast improvisation. The tilana of Carnatic music is based on the tarana, although the former is primarily associated with dance. Topic: <tapa>, tapa. Tapa is a form of Indian semi-classical vocal music whose specialty is its rolling pace based on fast, subtle, knotty construction. It originated from the folk songs of the Camel Riders of Punjab and was developed as a form of classical music by Mian Ghulam Nabi Shori or Shori Mian, a court singer for Asaf Ud Dawla, the Nawab of Avad. Nidhubabur Tapa, or tapas sung by Nidhu Babu were very popular in 18th and 19th century Bengal. Among the living performers of this style are Laxmanrao Pandit, Shano Karana, Manvalkar, Giriya Devi, Ishwachandra Karkari, Jayant Kot and Meeta Pandit. Thumri 
Thumri is a semi-classical vocal form said to have begun in Uttar Pradesh with the court of Nawab Wajid Ali Shah, R. 1847–1856. There are three types of Thumri, Purabang, Lucknavi and Punjabi Thumri. The lyrics are typically in a proto-Hindi language called Brij Basha and are usually romantic. Some recent performers of this genre are Abdul Karim Khan, the brothers Barkat Ali Khan and Baid Ghulam Ali Khan, Begum Akta, Giriya Devi, Prabha Atre, Sadeshwari Devi, and Shobha Gertu. Ghazal <laughs> <laughs> In the Indian subcontinent, Ghazal became the most common form of poetry in the Urdu language and was popularized by classical poets like Mir Taki Mir, Ghalib, Dar, Zark and Sauda amongst the North Indian literary elite. Vocal music set to this mode of poetry is popular with multiple variations across Central Asia, the Middle East, as well as other countries and regions of the world. Ghazal exists in multiple variations, including semi-classical, folk and pop forms. Instruments <inaudible> 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 Although Hindustani music clearly is focused on the vocal performance, instrumental forms have existed since ancient times. In fact, in recent decades, especially outside South Asia, instrumental Hindustani music is more popular than vocal music, partly due to a somewhat different style and faster tempo, and partly because of a language barrier for the lyrics in vocal music. A number of musical instruments are associated with Hindustani classical music. The veena, a string instrument, was traditionally regarded as the most important, but few play it today and it has largely been superseded by its cousins the sitar and the sarod, both of which owe their origin to Persian influences. Among bowed instruments, the sarangi and violin are popular. The banshuri, shenai and harmonium are important wind instruments. In the percussion ensemble, the tabla and the pakavaj are the most popular. Rarely used plucked or struck string instruments include the serbahar, sersringa, santor, and various versions of the slide guitar. Various other instruments have also been used in varying degrees. <laughs> <laughs> Festivals Among the earliest modern music festivals focusing on Hindustani classical music was the Harbolab Sangeet Samelan, founded in 1875 in Jalandhar. Dover Lane Music Conference notably debuted in 1952 in Kolkata and Sawai Gandhava Bhimsan Festival in 1953 in Pune, while festivals such as the ITCSRA Sangeet Samelan appeared in the early 1970s. Arabic Makam Carnatic music <laughs>